I need just so I have enough room for his ears. But you've got a lot more room on your paper than I do on mine. So I'm just going to really lightly sketch out our circle here. And while we look for these drawings, what we call that rough sketch. So it's okay that you've got all those extra lights in there, because it's really what a rough sketch is all about. So notice I'm creating lots and lots of circle lines just for that one sheet here for him. And this is just your foundation, so just keeping this really light. With this side of our circle, we'll also add in some construction lines, and these construction lines are going to help us anchor down the features of the thing. So he's not going to look straight ahead of us, or a profile. It's going to be what we call a three-quarter angle. So instead of drawing a line right down the middle of the circle, I'm going to draw it a stretched out backwards C. So I'm giving this construction line a bend to it, like you're cutting out a crescent moon right outside of that circle. And about halfway inside of our circle, I'm going to add another curved construction line. And this one's going to curve right down on our circle. So this is like a stretched out letter U shape here for him. You can also think of it as you're creating a beach ball there on your page here as well. Now this is just our basic foundation for a ball. <coughs> now that we've got a foundation, we're going to start to add in some details to make it look like him. And we'll start off by adding in his nose. His nose is just going to be a little oval shape here for us. Just coming right here to that plus sign, I'm just going to lightly sketch out an oval. And I'm going to even stretch this out past our original circle here as well. This is one of the only features for it that actually stick outside of that circle. Now this is something I want to keep, so I'm going to come back and darken this in. Now his nose is a little flat up here at the top, so I'm going to flatten out the oval up here at the top for him. But I'm just going to keep the roundness over here on the side and at the bottom for him as well. So this looks more like a jelly bean shape here for him. So notice now how his nose is starting to stand out from the rest of our drawing. We'll give him a big smile too, and for a smile, we'll add in what we like to call smile lines. We get those too. Those little creases on the side of your smile, and we're only going to be seeing one side of his smile line. So it's going to come over here to the far left hand side, and right up above our construction line, I'm going to add in a rainbow shape. So that's going to be the end of his smile line here for him. And for the where his smile is going to sit, it's going to sit right here underneath his nose. So I'm going to give myself a little marker here for him. And we'll just connect his smile line all the way over towards that little point for him. So just go back here and just darken that shape in for him. Well, he likes to smile with his mouth open. Now to open up his mouth, I'm just going to come over here to the side of his smile line. And I'm just going to stretch out a letter U curving down towards the bottom part of the circle and curving it right back over towards the other side of the smile. Let's go back and darken that in for him as well. With an open mouth, we'll also be able to see his lower lip as well. So coming right underneath this U shape, I'm going to add in another U shape right below that. And I'm going to keep this pretty close inside of our original circle here as well. We'll also, with an open mouth, we'll be able to see his tongue inside. And for his tongue, it's just going to be two little hills that just sit right next to each other. So I'm just going to add in one little hill and two little hills. With a big smile, his cheeks get pushed up pretty high on either side of his face. I we're going to see one half of his cheek, so I'm just going to come over here to the end of his smile line. And right on top of that, I'm going to add in an upside down letter U. So just showing that smile line is really pushing up his cheeks here on the side. You can also think of this as a his smile line here as well, just a little bigger. But when you reach the side of your circle, pick out your favorite line and just darken this down all the way down towards his lower lip to close it off. So this ends up looking like a sideways letter J or even a hook on the side of his face. I can also come back and darken up the bottom half of our circle here as well, just from his nose down towards his lower lip, just picking out your favorite line here along the way. With all this in place, believe it or not, you've already created the bottom half of the ball. So how are drawings coming out so far? Pretty good, not bad. Are we having fun? Does it kind of look like Mickey Mouse? An old school Mickey Mouse, maybe? A little bit. 
bit here and there, yeah. Okay, well, we'll start to move up to the most expressive part of any character, and that's going to be his eyes. Now, all Paul dies, there's going to be some old little shapes for us, and he's going to have what we like to call pie eyes. Nicky has uh, pie eyes as well when he was first created in 1928, and you can even check that out over at the Nicky's One Wheel, because he has the old school pie eyes there as well. sketch out a tall oval just sitting over here on the right side. I'm hopping over here on the left side, right up above his smile, I'm going to sketch out another tall oval. But this one I'm going to have it be a little bit larger just because we see more of it. Because he is sitting in this three-quarter angle, anything that's over on the left side is going to look larger than over here on the right side. Now to give him these old school pie eyes, uh, eyes, I'm going to cut out just a letter B here on the side of his eye. And this is what they like to call a highlight. I'm just doing the same thing over here on the right side. You can also think of that as like Pac-Man eyes here as well. And go back and just darken up the rest of the oval. Just picking out your favorite oval line here along the way. Speaking of video games, uh, Oswald is going to appear in the new Epic Mickey 2 game that will be coming out in September, so you can check that out. And it's also going to appear in the 3DS game as well. Yeah. Well, with those eyes in place, you want to go back and make sure that they're the darkest part of our drawing. This is where all the attention and focus goes to is right inside those eyes. And since Oswald doesn't talk, it's the most expressive part of any character. So just making sure that those here are extra dark here for him. And in the Epic Mickey 2 game, he is going, for the first time, uh, with Dizzy, is going to get a voice. So you can actually hear Oswald speak as well. So just making sure that those are extra dark there for him. With his eyes in place, we can start to add in his mask. And Mickey has a mask too, and his is a letter M shape, and Oswald's mask is a letter M shape as well. So we're just going to come up here to the top of the circle, and right here where our construction line and our circle meet in the middle, I'm just going to add in the letter B. So this would be the middle of his mask. Well, from our letter B, I'm going to curve it up towards the top of the circle and dropping it right back down towards that cheek line here for him. So it's going to curve it right up here towards the top of the circle and just pushing it away from his eye, just dropping it right back down towards that cheek. And with the mask in place, we can go back and just darken up the rest of his head up here at the top, just picking out your favorite circle line here along the way. So just making sure it's connecting here to the side of his nose and the side of his mask here at the top as well. But we're still missing something for him, right? What are we missing? Yeah, yeah those rabbit ears. Well, for his rabbit ears, they have a specific <coughs> placement for them. And they sit about a 45 degree angle from the middle of his face. So I'm going to come right back to where our two construction lines meet. And right up above his cheek, I'm going to add in a diagonal line. I'm going to push this line out pretty long here, just because his rabbit ears are long for him. And right on top of his left eye, I'm going to add in another diagonal line. And that's about a 45 degree angle for him. So this is where the two ears are going to sit. I tend to think that his ears look like baseball bats, so they're wider at the top than they are at the bottom. So we're going to get a little bit thinner there for him. So I'm going to start here at the end of my line, for however long you want to make them, and I'm going to add in a stretched out letter C shape. And up here at the top, I'm going to add in a rainbow shape. So this will be the widest part of his ear. Now from that widest part, I'm going to curve it down here just a little bit thinner here for him. I'll just go back here and just darken that in. And just doing the same thing over here on the side. Just curving it down here just a little bit closer to his head. I'll just do the same thing up here at the top here for him. Just curving that down just a little bit closer to his head. 
right? If you use those construction lines, it's just our little guideline there for him. Just so I know where his ears want to sit. And because he is a black and white character, you can go back and shade him in if you like as well. And his ears are black, so you can use the side of the pencil just to give him a nice little even tone there for him. You can also give a little shade to the inside of his mouth as well, just to see a little contrast. And don't forget to shade in the mask area too as well, since that's also black for him. Or you can also go back and just darken up any of those other lines, then kind of fade away throughout the whole drawing process. But the last step an artist needs to make is a signature. And you can sign your name wherever you feel it fits best. But after you're all done, it, you have just created your very own Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. So, how did we do? Is that good? Huh? Alright, well, I would love to see each and every one of your drawings. So, on the count of three, you can go and show me how you all did. So, don't forget to take a look around, because everybody's room is different. You're all different. You're supposed to have your own unique art style as well. Alright, so one, two, three. Oswald, let's see who looks out here. Very nice costume here, looking good. Excellent work over here as well. Very nice, got some small little Oswalds as well. Nice job over here in the middle section, looking good. Very nice job over here as well. You can look the other way. Nice job for you. Excellent job. Well, I'm impressed. I like the What do you think? I think everyone should pass. I agree. So you all graduate from the Animation Academy. So give yourselves all the ground applause to this graduate. Congratulations. Very nice job. Well, now that you've drawn off, well, you are welcome to come back for another class, in which we'll be teaching you a different Disney character. And matter who are we drawing next? for your artist Katie, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Katie, for teaching us how to draw on this wall. At this time, your exit doors are now open. We ask that you grab one.